Games Workshop's basement. Hosted by John Kurt. Tomb Kings of Kemri. Ooh. Um, they're not bad guys. These guys are good guys. What are, you, what, are you, what, are, what are they doing in here? These guys, all these, uh, I mean, these, these, they're these undead races are risen from the dead. They're mummies. Uh, risen hey, from the dead. Diggy, these guys are builders. They're not, they're not destroyers. Well, I unless mean, you're talking about destroyer of eternities, and that's a totally different thing. Okay. But we're going to talk about three of the best units for Tomb Kings of Kemri. Um, First up, I've got skeleton horse archers. I think these guys are insane. Um, Definitely not the models, but let's talk about the rules. <laughs> yeah, the the models are kind of insane, and that they look like kind of a, <laughs> like if you were to like roll some play doh like between your hands, <laughs> and then like take your fingernail and like draw the lines on where the bones separate. Yeah. Like that's basically the sculpt. You know what? I don't want to yuck someone's yum. So let's uh, let's talk about the rules. <laughs> Dude, I'm taking them. Like, let, yeah. let me tell you this. I'm, I'm building a lot of, of horse archers here. Uh, <laughs> there's a lot of horse archers being built at the McDevitt household. Oh, boy. Um, so they're cheap. They're like 11 points a model. They have a bow that always hits on a five because um, that's they still have uh, arrows of Aspis. Um, they are scout and skirmish. Uh -huh. And they have a rule called reserve, reserve move. Um, reserve move means that after they do a normal, after they move normally, in the shooting phase, after everyone is shot, they can move again. Oh. They have, yeah. a, they have a shoot and scoot. Yeah, yeah. So uh, Tomb King's Chariots have that as well, uh, which oh. is really nice. Yeah. Oh, wow. So it kind of makes up for them being a little bit uh, pillow-fisted. Okay. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, really cool. I think they're a great place to put characters that you don't want to fight stuff. Yeah. Because you can't march block them, and they can just move away 16 inches in any direction. 360 degrees because they're skirmishers so they're going to be really tough to catch i think um the next one i have on here is tomb scorpions tomb scorpions are almost exactly like you remember them if you remember them in any edition of warhammer they're awesome so amazing. they're a little monster um they're toughness five three wounds they have four attacks they're strength five they're minus two ap on their attacks and their claws have killing blow yep. and it's monster it's slayer it's Snip, snip. <laughs> so yeah, that that big giant that you have, they can cut off his balls, and then he's done. He's dead. <laughs> and they come up from the ground. Yeah. So uh, they have it. You can for five points, you can buy them the ambushers rule. So they come in there. But also, Tim Kings have a rule that lich priests have called arise from the sands, um, or not arise from the sands, but uh, like entomb from the sands. And basically, ambushing units, you can pass a leadership check and put them anywhere within twelve inches of the lich priest. Um, during the command phase, they can't charge, but they can move normally after they come up. Oh, that's really good. So it lets you put some play units in really weird places. Yeah. And then finally, the casket of souls. <sighs> what a model. Um, so, so just the history lesson. I used to I used to put my army and turn it around when I was <laughs> fighting this in sixth edition. What does it do now? Um. So. You don't have to worry about that anymore. That's not okay, that's good, not good. a thing. So it has two bounce spells that it can cast at power level three. And then it also gives itself a plus one to bounce spells. Um, so they're actually power level four. Um, oh, okay. So the first one you cast in your command phase is called Light of Protection. And it's a remains in play spell. And what that does is every Tomb King's unit within 18 inches of it gets a six plus ward save and minus one to hit. Oh, that's really good. <laughs> yep. Yep. Like full stop. It's so that that ability by itself is an amazing ability. Yeah, minus one um, yeah, you have to be within 24 inches to try and dispel it. If you have a level four, if you have a level two, you have to be within 18. So like if it's in the back of your lines, it's hard to get to. And the other spell it has is called Light of Death. Now, if it casts Light of Death, Light of Protection goes away. Okay. So you probably what what I do typically is I go for Light of Protection. If they dispel it then I cast Light of Death. Yeah. 
And light of death is you pick a unit if they, they take a leadership test within 36 inches in line of sight. If they pass the leadership test, they take D, D3 strength three hits at like AP minus one. If they fail the leadership test, they take D6 strength six hits with no armor save. No, sorry, D6 plus three strength three, six hits with no armor save. That's a lot. That's Yeah. That, yeah. That's going to hurt. That's going to wound all the toughness my, four knights. My knights two. don't want that any part of that. Yeah. <laughs> No, they don't. No, they don't. Um, so yeah, um, it's really versatile. The other thing that it does that's very important is all your priests within 12 inches of it get plus one to cast. That's really good. Yeah. Especially on a 2d6 system. Right. Uh, yeah, plus one to cast is hugely impactful. Yeah. So I try and upgrade stuff to level two or level four when I can. Um, uh, but we'll see. I didn't. I don't find points for that all the time. Okay. Um, so... What is this army kind of, oh uh for magic items oh my god yeah. there's so many good magic items um let's see the magic item that i probably like the most i'm going to talk about destroy of eternities that's not on my list but i like destroy of eternities it's a, good it's a magical great weapon with killing blow mm -hmm. um and instead of it it's a very expensive i think it's uh like 65 points um it's uh it's a magical great weapon with killing blow and instead of attacking with it if you don't want to you can just do d6 auto hits to what you're fighting hmm. so just roll a d6 you get that many hits uh, i think that's incredibly good yep um it's very difficult to uh, uh it's it's very difficult to deal with uh an item that has such a high strength and good ap value i think it's ap minus three and killing blow it's really good in a challenge situation because you're probably not going to hit with more than two of his attacks anyway. So as long as you're not rolling a one, you're getting the same or better than what you would get anyway. So I really like I really like the Destroy of Eternities, Dickie. Seems pretty um, good. Uh, and then for spells, uh, they've got three unique spells. They've got Incantation of the Desert Wind, which gives everybody within, uh, well, depending on how good you cast it, it's either one unit or every unit within your command range uh, reserve move. Oh. So they, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, uh, Cursed Blades is really good, too. It lets you reroll ones to hit for every unit within your caster's command range. Rerolls is pretty good in this game. Yeah. Yep. Um, so how do Team Kings play? Um, they sound really good, right? They have some They have some pretty good strengths. Um, they're undead. Why is undead um, a strength? Uh, <laughs> well, they never break. Oh. So instead of taking break tests, you lose models equal to the amount that you've lost by. Uh, combat by um however tomb kings have a bunch of ways to mitigate this um so the battle standard bear for instance every unit within 12 loses by d3 less and then almost all of the characters have a rule called indomitable uh -huh. which means that they lose by less equal to their indomitable value well um all the heroes except for the necrotects are indomitable too so all like basically any unit with a character in it loses by two less already Okay. So, uh, yeah, it's 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 very good. Um, and then they have a lot of ways to buff their army. As we talked about, there's tons of ways that you can do stuff. Um, you have my will be done, which lets the tomb king or prince uh, pick between three different effects if he passes a leadership test, mm -hmm. and that's uh, plus one weapon skill or plus D three to initiative or movement. He gets to pick those during the the strategy phase every turn on um, what he wants to do. Also, the battle standard bear lets you reroll leadership tests. For Tomb Kings, which is critical because that ability is based on leadership tests. Um, we talked about Entomb from the Sands being based on leadership tests. Also, Arise, which is the way that they raise new models back, is a special rule and not tied to a spell. Mm -hmm. That's a leadership test. So um, there's a lot of ways that you can, uh, like, you want to maximize those leadership tests. So a Battle Standard Bearer, I feel like, is almost compulsory in, in a Tomb Kings list. Okay. How does now, the, is the resin is an interesting mechanic that mm -hmm. Tomb Kings have. So can you let us know how to do that? Yeah. Sure. No, yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty easy. Um, so basically you you pass a leadership test and you pick a unit that's within 12 inches of the, of the Lich Priest. Now, uh, depending on what kind of unit it is, it raises a certain number of wounds. You have to start with character units, models that are wounded in the, in the unit first before you can start with, uh, before bringing back dead models. Okay. So, um, if you're infantry, uh, you bring back your wizard level plus D3. If you're cavalry, 
uh, like heavy cavalry or light cavalry, it's wizard level plus one. If you're monstrous cavalry um, or monstrous infantry or chariots, you just get you bring back the wizard level in wounds. Okay. And then if you're anything else like behemoth, war machine, um, uh, monstrous creature, it's one wound per cap per per attempt. Okay. Which is pretty cool, and they have a lot of ways to do it. Um, you know, all the mortuary priests have that, obviously, and then also uh, you can. If you're playing uh, the royal uh, host uh, rule in the appenda in the appendix, you can you can buy an upgrade that lets your tomb king do that, and Cetra can do it as well. Okay, so it's basically an attrition game. It, it, what it comes down to, they're going to try and grind you out, um, and maybe tr and just kind of delay as much as they can, and just try and squeak by getting points without you getting too many of their points. Cool. Um, that's kind of how they win, uh, but they're. They do, they have some weaknesses. They don't have armor again. Like there's no there's no real armor in this list. It's light armor, maybe heavy armor at best. I think yeah. the best save that the army can get, unless they're buying magic items, is four plus. I'm I'm looking at this picture, Danny, and there's not a lot of armor on these skeletons. Well, so it turns out, you know, I don't know. Skeletons may be disrupted by armor. I'm not really sure what's going on there. <laughs> um, and then their their stats are bad. Like um. Like their movement four on their infantry, their weapon skill and ballistic skill two, uh, strength three, toughness three on a lot of stuff. Although they do have some tougher units. Um, and they can't march at all unless they have the fly keyword. Then they can march. But otherwise, they can't march. Just slow guys. They're just slow yeah. guys. Yeah. And, and that's okay. You know, you, you, you got you to gotta, you gotta be okay with it. You got to let them take their own pace, take things at their own pace and really kind of hammer things in there. Got it. Which is what we're going to talk about in my list. Now... <laughs> The Everything list that <laughs> the list that I made now this this sample list I'd like to point out um, is a list that is from uh, the uh, Arcane Journal. So this is a mortuary cult list specifically, and not a Grand Army. Okay. Um, I've been playing this because that's my favorite part of Tomb Kings, and so that's the part I really like. So I made this list with that in mind. Um, the list is High Mortuary Priest, who is my general. He's level four. Um, he has Amulet of the Serpent, which gives his unit poison attacks, which is important for archers. <laughs> I would. Uh, it sounds important for <laughs> archers, yeah. And then the Warding Splint uh, gives him, is heavy armor that wizards can wear and also gives him a 5-plus ward save. Now, every model in a Tomb King's army has regeneration. Okay. I guess I should point that out, too. That's, that's, that's kind of important. important. Yeah. That's pretty important. So regen works very similar to a ward save. It's a save that you take in addition to armor and in addition to ward. Um, it does give combat res even if you save the wounds that are regenerated. Um, so even though you're like kind of saving models and stuff like that, you you will still maybe lose combat. Um, if you kill the Hierophant, which is the highest wizard uh, in the Tomb King army, then your whole army loses regeneration. Regeneration doesn't go away from flaming attacks naturally. You also have to have the flammable special rule, which all the Tomb King characters do. And they have an extra special rule called dry as dry as dust, which means on a four plus, they take an extra wound from flaming attacks. <laughs> so flaming attacks are really good against these guys. They're mummies. They're just mummies. They're mummies. Yeah. That's right. Um, and then I have two level one mortuary priests on skeleton steeds. Yeah. And then in this list, you can take a mortuary priest with a battle standard. Oh, um, and so I have another level one with a battle standard also on a skeleton steed. That's a lot of resin, Danny. It's, uh, yeah. And the, one of the nice rules about this particular list is they get plus one to the resurrection, uh, for plus one for resin. So they heal an extra wound. Oh dear. Um, then I have a tomb prince with just a great weapon. He's got light armor and a great weapon. That's, he's just hanging out there. He's real cheap at 90 points. Um, but he's hard to kill. He's toughness five and has three wounds. Yeah. So he's annoying and I can heal him. Um, <laughs> yep. And and then I've got the unit of 24 skeleton warriors with light armor, shields, and the war banner, as well as I just gave them a standard and champion because I didn't feel like I needed the musician. Because if I tie combat anyway, like whatever, I'm not going to lose any wounds. Yeah. So it wrong. doesn't matter. Yep. Uh, a unit of 10 horse archers that all the priests go into. Oh, okay. So now you got to try and catch this like real squirrely like fast cab unit that's also shooting 10 poison bow shots at you every turn. Mm -hmm. So they're trying to maybe kill a chaff unit or something like that. Um, a unit of four Shopti, uh, cause they're a decent monstrous infantry unit and I can take them as a core choice in mortuary cult if I want to. Yep. 
uh, a unit of three Tomb Swarms. Um, these guys are a good blocker. It's 15 wounds worth of stuff to try and get rid of. Uh, two single tomb scorpions with ambushers, and they have a they have there's an upgrade for this list called the terrors below. Okay, and so when these guys arise from the sands within eight inches of an infantry unit, That's I get to make them take initiative tests equal to the unit strength of my unit that comes up. Yeah. So for a scorpion, it's it's four. Um, every every test they fail is a wound with no armor saves or regen saves as they oh. pull you into the sand. That's not nice. Yep. Not too bad on the scorpions. They're just nice little monsters. But on the unit of eight necro serpents, which is a which is a new unit, and these are the the serpents that the Necropolis Knights ride on. Uh -huh. Um, but you can buy them by themselves in Mortuary Cult, which is pretty cool. That's kind of a nice little thing. Yeah. Um, they also have this. And so that's unit strength 24. So I make somebody take 24 initiative tests or die when they come uh -huh. up. And then also there's this giant 24 wound block of dudes that's gonna stand in front of you and fights pretty good. Okay, I and then, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say something to you after this, Danny. Uh, <laughs> okay. Okay. Then we have two Screaming Skull Catapults yeah. with Skulls of the Foe. Um, Screaming Skulls, whenever they hit a unit, they automatically have to take Panic Test or run away. Yeah. Um, and then Skulls of the Foe, uh, wherever the center of the template lands, all enemy units within 2d6 of that are minus one leadership. That seems to be a good uh, ability when you're trying to make people run away. Yep. Nice. And then we have the Casket. All right. So, Danny, you just created a, a Dwellers Below with uh, your <laughs> Necro Servants. <laughs> yeah, but it, the, so, okay. So, the nice thing about this is that it doesn't target characters. So, you can't have your character fall into a pit. But, yeah, basically, I'm going to I'm gonna suck people into the sand, I'm hopefully. The and sand. They, uh, they don't come back up. That's not nice. But this is a shooting, I think this is a, this is a shooting army, kind of. It yeah. is, it's like very selectively fight stuff and it kind of basically holds people off with units like the Ushanti and the Skeleton Warriors to try and like limit the amount of points that somebody can get out of me while trying to maximize the points that I get out of other people by using, you know, Tomb Scorpions to kill characters and uh, like the Swarms and the Skeleton Warriors and the Ushanti holding people off or alternately slamming people in the terms of Ushanti. Um, yeah. But yeah, um, it's a it, it's it's a pretty versatile list. I think it has some good matchups, but it has some bad ones too. So especially if you can kill ten skeleton horse archers, <laughs> if you have that ability, then you should be okay. Um, I was going to ask uh, back in the day uh, when you killed the general, the army would crumble. Is that a similar mechanic in this? So situation? that so no. Um, how it works is if you kill the hierophant, that starts to happen. Okay. It's not. It's and that's the way it worked in Tomb Kings as opposed to vampire accounts. Yeah. Um, that when you kill characters and specifically only like royalty in Tomb Kings, they curse you. So you have uh -huh. to take a leadership test or you take some extra hits, like strength two hits with no armor save kind of sure. thing. Sure. Yeah. Very cool. That's a really yeah. cool list. It's time to step into the grim darkness With nerds gather talking Warhammer madness Grim after dark, the podcast with the hosts John, Danny and Val, but they're not the most Claiming to be experts, but it's all a facade Talking about battles and dice rolls, they're all odd Trying to sound cool with their Warhammer talk But I'm here to expose, it's all just squawk Nerds, nerds, everywhere I see Talking Warhammer this, like it's a decree But let me tell you, homie, it is all just a game it